Went through a draft not being selected, and, I, and then Minnesota signed me as a free agent and uh, gave me a, a second shot, and I made the best of it. Draft is different today. Did you actually go to the draft? Were you sitting there? It wasn't like it was today, and you were just no, drafted and didn't know. No. Well, I had no reason because, I mean, I'm sitting in a hospital bed. I, was, I knew I wasn't going to get drafted, so I, they still did it, but not, not as, as, as big as it is today. What do you remember from your draft year, Murph? The fourth overall in 1980. Do you remember the three who went in front of you? Yes, I definitely do. I remember, and a, uh, a, f a fun fact, the fourth pick belonged. It was originally the Detroit Red Wings, and I was drafted by the Los Angeles Kings due to, uh, I believe it was the Dale McCourt uh, free agent signing uh, compensation. Oh, that was compensation. So I ended up with Los Angeles. They had Detroit's pick, so I could have started off here in Detroit, but of course ended in, uh, started off in Los Angeles. I remember it was in Montreal. I was at the draft. Uh, and if, uh, like the kids we'll see today, uh, very excited, uh, a day that you've, you dream about your whole life. I'm sure it's the same for Mac when his draft uh, time came up. Uh, you hung on uh, every word that was mentioned during that previous season about where you were rated and where the chance where you're going to go. And when you finally hear your name, it's, uh, you, it's, it's so, that first step. So Larry, to what year, you drafted what year? I was 1980. Fourth pick overall. Who was one, two, and three? Oh, sorry, Ken. Yeah, I got away. Oh, yeah. I going on. No, no, I was uh, Doug Wickenheiser uh, by the uh, Montreal Canadiens. The second uh, a centerman, uh, second was a defenseman, David Babbage, uh, uh, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, third was Denny Savard, the Chicago Blackhawks. And isn't that shocking? Because Montreal had a chance at Denny Savard and French Canadian. Doug and they, uh, hey, I'll oh, boy, they never, they still. I'm, Heard the end of that one, not picking on their uh, local I'll, boy. I'll give you something better than that. Okay, so I'm in Minnesota, 1980, 81. I got signed as a free agent. So we went to the finals in 1981. 1982, we finished first, but lost um, first round of Chicago. My third year draft is 1983. Think about this. Steve Eiserman, Minnesota North Stars had the first pick overall. They took Brian Lawton first. Steve Eiserman goes fourth. Now, can you imagine if Steve Eiserman went number one to Minnesota with us? Oh, uh, your centerman. That's uh, a whole nother world then. <laughs> Nobody would know him then, here. right? We wouldn't be here then. All right, before How we get. How about that, Mac? All right, Mac, what do you remember about your draft year? It's a butt. Katie's a Think nuts. how your career would have been different without Stevie. Oh, would, would have been, been your team. Yeah, I wouldn't have got picked on as much. <laughs> I wouldn't have, it took me three years to quit crying, sucking my thumb in the corner. Like <laughs> 46th overall in 92, what do you remember about your draft year? Montreal Forum, uh, honestly, individual, like for indiv one thing individual, it's the highest honor ever to have. And what you think about is everything that's gone in it. And I remember, obviously, growing up in Leamington and being a Red Wing fan, I want, when the first round came around, the Wings had a pick, and there was a chance that it could have been me, and it wasn't my name, because I thought I was gonna go. Ottawa said they were gonna take me the first pick of the second round. And then when it slid by there and came back to Detroit, it was like Murph said, you're waiting on every breath. And then they said, right winger, OHL, Belleville. And I was like, there's no other right wingers in Belleville. <laughs> well, that's me. So to be able to do that with all the family and friends, I still remember, um, Obviously, it was Canada, and I was 19, so we had a heck of a party that night. You know? <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. And they say to the kids now, and we're going to see the first round tonight, Red Wings pick sixth overall again. That'll get underway in about uh, 20 minutes from now. But they tell the kids, if you're not thinking, the agents do anyway, if you don't think you're going to go in the first round, you don't sit there. And especially, it's a long day tomorrow for uh, rounds two through seven. Let's look uh, ahead. I know anyone the Red Wings pick this year Probably won't be in the lineup, maybe, but unlikely. What are the Red Wings? Dino, we'll start with you. The most pressing needs for this team going forward. Well, I, I, with Stevie coming aboard, I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of changes. So, I, 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 you know, they, they probably want to get a guy that's going to be, uh, you know, obviously around for a long time, you know. So, I mean, I, I don't know a lot of the players, but, uh, you know, with, with his staff, I'm sure they've assessed everything that, uh, you know, their needs and, and whether it's a forward or, uh, you know, I'm sure they have a list of guys if they're available, whether it's the defenseman or a forward, if he falls in that slot, 
you know, they're going to they're gonna take him, and, and, and I'm sure Stevie's got it all figured out at that point. I th oh, sorry, yeah. the, uh, it's, I would love to see the list of four, because that's basically what Steve Eisman and his crew has put together today. We know the first two picks yep. with uh, Hughes and Cackle. They're gone. After that, I think from three through 10, 12, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of players. So I, what Eisman has to do is he's got to decide his four players that he wants in the order he wants them. And then the highest guy on that list available, because one of them will be mathematically, because they're going to pick six, they're the guy they're going to take. So they're definitely in the first round going to pick the best player available. You can't, there, there's no way, I mean, they'd love to get a defenseman, but there's not going to be, probably not one available, and they're going to have to reach too far down, too low in the talent pool to pick one, so I don't think we'll see one in the first round, but I think uh, the Wings would have loved that opportunity because, hey, how can you win without great defense? That's what I've always said. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm more interested in what Stevie said that in the second, third, fourth round when you get character guys. These Hall of Fame guys, will, whoever's in the first pick, it's going to be a great choice, but second, third, fourth, tomorrow is what I'm looking forward to. Well, what the Red Wings won't be doing this year is trading down. Some teams will. The Red Wings have done that in the past. If we go back to 2013, the Red Wings dealt with San Jose. The Red Wings had the 18th overall pick. The San Jose Sharks wanted a guy by the name of Mirko Mueller. Mirko Mueller this past year scored three goals as a member of the New Jersey Devils. San Jose wanted him. Red Wings said, fine, we'll swap with you. So the Red Wings from 18 went to 20 and got an additional second round pick. With that additional second round pick, they got Tyler Bertuzzi. With that, yeah, with that 20th overall pick, just two picks lower, they didn't need Mirko Mueller. They had their sights set on Anthony Manta. Funny. Great draft picks and the future coming the present closer than you think. Every time I see Michael Rasmussen up there, when you look back to this year, Michael Rasmussen, a game against the New Jersey Devils, scored with seven minutes left. Dylan Larkin won it in overtime. Had Rasmussen not tied the game 2 2 in that game, the Red Wings would be picking first overall tonight. I think a one game makes a difference. Crazy. You're gonna put that on the kid? Well, I don't know, Ken. That's that a, is BS. That, that's a Ken. That's a bit I of a stretch. A foul. That's a D-Mac foul right there. Kenny to the box. Hey, that's you know what? Ken. It would have been him. Would have been somebody else. I'm just saying what it comes down to is it's just the luck of the draw. That's what it is. Steve Eiserman's with the Red Wings now, and the Red Wings are lucky to have him. I think Kenny Holland's gonna do great things in Edmonton. He's got his work cut out for him there, but some major shakeups coming with the Oilers and a new staff. Steve Eiserman now with the Red Wings. You played with Stevie, Murph. Dino, your thoughts, first off, Mac, on Steve Eisenman and his tendencies. Ah, oh, work ethic. 
you know, he's going to work as hard as the hardest working player in that room. And that, for a guy who loves the game, loves the organization, it's going to put, you know, I look at him to lead this organization just like he led it from on the ice and in the dressing room. And a lot of times he's not going to be the one who's going to be saying stuff, but his actions are going to speak, you know, louder than words. And whatever he does, I'm, I'm confident that it's, it's right. And if it's not right, he's not afraid to change it or say, okay, maybe I made a mistake. But culturally, it's, it's, it's awesome. I'm excited. Well, he obviously is a player back to Touched on, talented, committed, successful, hardworking, and I think as a general manager, he's shown those same traits. Has success with Team Canada in the Olympics. The uh, the, the executive director of those uh, of those two years, the two the two gold medals. He also in Tampa, he was a guy that made tough trades, made tough decision, buying out uh, marquee name players in Tampa for the better of the franchise. He drafted quite well. So he's coming here with a lot of experience as a general manager, a guy that is committed as a GM as he was as a player. So it definitely looks, the future looks bright with those pieces that Ken Holland put in place, those draft picks that he accumulated, the young talent that this team has. Steve's gonna pick the ball up and run. So it's an exciting day. I think it's, I look at it as day one for Steve Eisman as a general manager. All right, let's hear from the former captain and the Red Wings general manager and executive vice president. Hey Red Wings fans, it's Steve Eiserman. I want to welcome you to Little Caesars Arena for tonight's draft party. We can't thank you enough for your support and continued passion for the Detroit Red Wings. This weekend's draft is another important step as we build this organization towards our ultimate goal, a 12th Stanley Cup championship for the city of Detroit. I hope you have a great night tonight and enjoy all the festivities at the party. And I hope Steve has a great night tonight too. There's Carly Johnson's got some trivia for you right here to our left. Carly, take it away. Thanks, Ken. Ooh, that was an echo. All right, we've got some trivia people here. They need to get one question right, and if they do, they're going to opening night. We just found out it's Sunday, October 6th, against the Dallas Stars, so I hope to see you guys there. All right, what's your name where are you from? I'm Zach. I'm from Novi. Jamie from Novi. Awesome. Well, we got the first question coming up for you, Zach. This will be Steve Eiserman's first draft as the Red Wings general manager. In what year was Eiserman drafted by the Red Wings? A, 1983, B, 1991, or C, 1987? I think it's C. Is it C, 1987? Oh, sorry, Zach. Better luck next time. All right, what's your name and where are you from? Ryan, I'm from Detroit. Ryan from Detroit, let's get question number two. The Red Wings draft of 1989 is arguably the best draft in NHL history, which included star defenseman Nick Lidstrom. And what round was he drafted? Is it A1, B2, or C3? A1. A1, first round, let's see it. What is it? One, two, or three? Do you want to try again? Because everyone's selling. It's third round. Sorry about that, but come on, guys. All right, third question. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Mario. I'm from Royal Oak. Mario? All right, Mario. Question number three. Last year with the sixth pick, the Red Wings drafted Philip Zadina. Against which team did Zadina score his first NHL goal? A, Pittsburgh, B, Colorado, or C, Arizona? B, Colorado. Is it B, Colorado? <laughs> it is B. Against the Avalanche, Zadina scored his first NHL goal. Congratulations, you are going to opening night. And for being such good sports, you guys are going to opening night as well. We're feeling really generous today. Back to you guys on the stage. Great job, Red Wing fans. Great job, Carly. Uh, let's talk about the young core with this Red Wing group. A lot of good young talent. More to be drafted tonight. Uh, do you know what you're seeing uh, from, from Dylan Larkin and the likes on this team and Mantha and Bertuzzi, et cetera? Well, it, it, it's a great start, obviously. Dylan Larkin has really come full circle from, from the first year, so he's very passionate, you know, works hard. But there's a great core here, and what Stevie's going to do, and he's going to bring on some, some new talents, some trades. We've seen what he's done in Tampa, so I think we should all be excited here that, you know, we want to get this franchise back in the playoffs and having some success around here, which we're all used to. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a team that's uh, definitely on the way up. 
a great core of young players, uh, Larkin leading the way, I mean, Mantha, uh, uh, Bertuzzi turned out. I mean, if there's six guys you could mention up front that have turned out to be, these got to be franchise guys going to be here for a long time, going to be counted on heavily. So with this draft, the Wings are going to add more talent to it. They have 10 picks in this draft, and Steve Eisman's basically said himself, it's a numbers game. Because of the number of picks we have, we don't know which ones of our guys are going to step forward and be great Red Wings, but we know with this number of picks that we're going to get a few out of this draft. So that bodes well for the future. But definitely a team that has turned the corner, is moving forward, and it's a very exciting time for this team. A high-tempo, exciting team that wants to carry the play. They want puck possession like the Wings of old, and they're definitely taking the steps, and this draft piece, whoever they get today, will add to it. Yeah, no, you asked... Uh, well, happened to see you. Well, you wondered, uh, a lot of people wonder, uh, speed these days kills. Speed is the asset, but for me, it's what I like to see about this team is the way that they work, the way that they work together. But, um, you know, all our success has been through down the middle with the Eisermans, the Fedorovs, and the Drapers, and it's it's is it ironic or not that they're all sulky winners? So... You got to play both ends of the ice, and I look for Anthony to see you because I see him whether he's playing center or wing. Use that speed coming back because that's such an asset, and that's how you win championship. Yeah, and you know, like an older guy like Franz Nielsen, we may see Franz Nielsen play the wing for part of this year, and it depends how Michael Rasmussen, who we mentioned earlier, if he can develop into a strong center, his skating improves a little bit. Maybe Rasmussen is your third line center if Athanasiu is your second line center. Or maybe he's on the wing. Maybe Joey Valeno cracks the team. Glenn Denning goes to the wing. So there's a lot of mixing and matches that could go, and Zadina, et cetera. On the back end, the up-and-comers. I loved watching Philip Horonic, Murph, as a defenseman, play at the World Championships. He was outstanding. Yeah, he, this season was a, a tremendous progression for him, just the way he came along and established himself uh, they utilized them quite a bit this season. That, that's the luxury of the, 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 the position this team was in. It was an opportunity to develop young players, Horonic being one of them, put in opportunities and situations, and he excelled. And he, he took, he had, if this team was with a lot, had a lot more depth on the defense, we wouldn't have seen him play as much, and we don't have seen him as developed as he has. And as he continues on the World Championships, tremendous outing on his part to me. The player that made the greatest stride last season was Heronic on defense. And this is a guy, he was playing number one, number two type of ice time. Hey, they, they, they thought when they first got him, he might be a number three, number four. He might be uh, squeezing in on that top pair position. Yeah, and again, it was a, a Pavel Datsuk trade to Arizona, and you wind up with Dennis Cholosky when you drop from 16 to 20. And again, an additional pick, you wind up with Philip Peronik and Steve Eisenman tonight has three second round picks. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow what he does with those seconds or if he moves one tonight and perhaps moves up in addition to his number six overall pick. But you know what? There are late round gems to be found. The aforementioned Pavel Datsuk went in the sixth round of his draft. Henrik Zetterberg, the former captain, not yet officially retired, still with the time to go on the contract, but will go on LTIR once the season begins, we remember Henrik fondly. We can only hope with sixth overall the Red Wings find out they get a great player like they did in the seventh round.
of the draft in Henrik Zetterberg. Well, for this lottery, New Jersey Devils went from number three to number one. The New York Rangers went from six to number two. With the relationship Ray Shiro in New Jersey and the Hughes family, you think Jack Hughes is going to go number one to the Devils. I've spoken to some general managers even late in the season, and many of them said, you know what? We'd like the second overall pick. That way you don't have to pass on Jack Hughes. Capo Cackle, who many think should be the number one but likely won't be, will go number two to the Rangers. Chicago went from number 12 in the draft to number three. Remember when the Blackhawks picked Patrick Kane? They went from five to one. So it's about some luck involved too. So the Red Wings at number six. Let's start with you guys. Throw out a name or two you think they might like. I, I like them picking one of the kids from down the road in Plymouth on the, up that U.S. Uh, oh. national team. I'm going to say, because I like size and he's got some pedigree because his dad played, but Alex Turcotte. Um, yeah. You know, Elfie, he's, he's, really, he, he's one of those kids I think is, has developed uh, over the past year the most. And, um, you know, again, I like size. So Alex Turcotte is a heck of a player. The U.S. national team could have eight first-round draft picks. Five from the U.S. National Team Development Program in Plymouth could go in the top 10. If there's eight to go in the first round, that would be an all-time record. Incredible what the U.S. National Development Team Program has been able to do, not just this year, but over the years. Murph, anybody uh, stand out for you at a potential for the Red Wings at number six? Uh, I, I guess uh, Mac touched on uh, one, one thing I, I, I got to give kudos to is that program down in Plymouth, the, the under 18, the USA. What a tremendous group of talent they put together and they expect to have eight, eight of those players in the first round this year. What a tremendous accomplishment on that part. What a tremendous program and that, that bodes well for USA Hockey, obviously in the National Hockey League and, and in the world level. But looking at a name, I mean, Bowen Byram is the guy that I would love to get, a defenseman. He was, it looked like he was gonna go around that pick early on in the season, but he, his, his, uh, his numbers started, to, he started to climb up the chart and I think Unfortunately, he's going to be gone by the time the Wings pick, but Zgrass is a guy, Trevor Zgrass, he's a guy from down in Plymouth, the U18 program, uh, smart, great hands. He's a guy that's, I think, is going to be around and be available for the Wings. But Steve Eisman, he's just got to have four names ready, and I would love, I would do anything to see that list, those four guys have you mentioned, that he would pick. Have you mentioned Caulfield? No, that's, uh, that's right in your wheelhouse, Dino. Yeah, that's right. He's probably the most natural goal scorer yeah. out there in the draft. Amazing. I, I, is he going to be around? I don't know. Is he going to be around? He'll be around. I, I, I think many scouts have Cole Caulfield. Uh, funnily enough, where the Edmonton Oilers need wingers for Ken Holland, a lot of the scouts have Cole Caulfield ranked anywhere between 8 and 12. He's 5'6". And he's but a goal scorer like Alex to bring it better. He's, he's, he's going to get the, the same. best goal scorer out there. can't teach that. The hey, hardest you know, thing in hockey is to the, score goals. Yeah, but he's going to get the same thing I got. He's too small. He's not. He can't score. He can't survive in this league. But obviously, it's a different game right now. This guy can score better than anybody right now. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's funny, but you saw the two teams in the Stanley Cup final, the St. Louis Blues and the Boston Bruins, and when it comes down to crunch time, size does matter. Well, in the know, end, I still, I know, I know skilled players have more room today, but in the end, and what the Red Wings have a plethora of is wingers. Yeah. They need center or defense, and what you said, well, Bowen Byram. Well, said he will pick the best player available. Well, the best player available then is going to be Vasily Podkolzin. I think the Russian who was ranked number yeah, three. Yeah, but you're not going to see him there for two years. years. Are you going to take well, that chance? Well, you may not see a player they draft for two years anyway. Uh, KHL, I don't know. That makes me nervous so over there. So the best player available. I don't see them taking him. Yeah. I don't at six because it's a risk. He's in the Continental Hockey League. <laughs> under contract for the next two years, and then if the Russians that's, throw money at him, he may stay there for another three or four years. That's why we're here, not in Vancouver. That's right. <laughs> but the guy I really like, I don't think he'll be there, is Kirby Doc. He's 6'4", six, 6'5", six, like Ryan Getzlaff from the Western Hockey League, Dylan Cousins. You mentioned Trevor Zegras, maybe the, the best passer in the draft. Cole Caulfield, by far the best scorer in the draft. Peyton Krebs, determination beyond belief. Pod Colson, all-round great player. He drives the bus every night. I think Chicago's going to be the real key. They got number three. Do they go for Bowen Byram, or do the Chicago Blackhawks perhaps go for Alex Turcotte? The Red Wings need help down the middle. Dylan Cousins, Alex Turcotte, Kirby Dock, Trevor Zegras, 
one of those guys, I think, goes to Detroit. I think Kirby Doc is their main man. I just don't think he's going to be there at number six. Now, what about Turkai? You mentioned him, a tremendous talent. Injuries this season? He had injuries. I mean, he had mono. Had... You know what? Part of his injury is for a, he's such a hard worker yeah. that he puts himself in situations that he does get hurt. But I think he's a he's I think that, The reason why I mentioned him, because that might scare off a couple of teams. He might fall into the draft. And the stranger things Possibly. have happened. I, I hear Chicago's interested in him. And then you've got uh, Colorado. Do they pick Bowen Byram? If Chicago goes for the centerman and Bowen Byram falls, boy, Colorado's got a pretty good D back there. And then you go to the Los Angeles Kings, the Kings at number take five it. right before They bought Detroit. out Dino uh, Fanuf, so I, I think the Kings will grab a defenseman. Byram, if he's available. That's why, I, I, unfortunately, he won't slip to number six. The only thing I've ever heard about, it negative about Bowen Byram at all, he drives it offensively. The only thing I've ever heard about him is his skating backwards is not that good. I guess for a defenseman, well, could that be an issue, didn't, Murph? Didn't hurt Paul Coffey that much, did it? When he got the puck all the time, it yeah, doesn't really right. matter. <laughs> he just skated forward coming back. He was, was he ever actually skating backwards, Coff? He just he always coming back, back and taking it away. And I could forward. He never stopped. Well, again, we'll be here throughout this round. The Red Wings pick sixth overall. Steve Eisenman's first draft as a Detroit Red Wing back in 2010. His first draft was with Tampa Bay. So let's join the crew from NBCSN as we watch the 2019 NHL entry draft. And the Stanley Cup champion Blues for now, though. Let's focus on teams with a pick like the New York Rangers as we go to Darren. Yeah, no question the New York Rangers could be a player here on the draft floor with the likes of Chris Kreider and Jimmy VC in play. Nothing guaranteed there, but both those players drawing attention. And obviously, the New York Rangers making a splash not long ago in acquiring Jacob Truba from the Winnipeg Jets. The number three pick in this draft belongs, of course, to the Chicago Blackhawks. The consensus number three player in this draft is Bowen Byram, an offensive defenseman from these 